it's Jane. I'm up at the allotment on this beautifully sunny, warm and yet blustery day and uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be taking a little look back at the last 12 months and just see if we can see what's changed. We're in the middle of August, so in a way, the main work at the moment is maintaining what we've got and harvesting. And I've got to be honest, I still don't feel like we're in the middle of harvest season. We've, we're having sort of things are trickling in, but um, we certainly haven't got glutes of anything yet. Oh, apart from cucumbers, <laughs> which are possibly the one thing you can't really store the same as other things. So if you've got any tips on how to store a cucumber, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I thought uh, I was trying to have a little think about what this plot was like this time last year because again, with gardening, and certainly if it's your first year up at a plot, you are taking on an unknown thing and in your head you have an idea of what it's going to be like. And that doesn't always match with what happens because there are so many different variables come into play. I keep looking over at it actually. So what I've done, I've put together um, a video. I've spliced, I've spliced some film together to sort of show what it was like when we took it on, which to be honest is it was July, whereas it's August now, it's 13 months ago, but it hadn't changed that much um, between July and August. So we can see in one year the difference. Bearing in mind that when the first video was taken as well, we were in the middle of that incredible, uncomfortable heat wave, um, which does sort of explain why the soil is quite so dry, but there were other, other factors at play as well. So yeah, I'll shut up. I'm gonna let you take a little look at the video. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see some changes. And then I'm gonna come back to you. Mike and I are just gonna have a little chat about some of the highs and lows. Okay, enjoy. <laughs> Is that a buzzer? 
And that is a buzzard. some of the world of good to see that video because I was sort of thinking so many things haven't gone right haven't gone to plan which usually aren't videoed <coughs> although I try and be as honest as I can but um oh my goodness looking around now and I do keep looking into the distance to see all the flowers and everything and the bees it's just beautiful from really what was a wasteland wasn't it when we took it on I mean do you remember when you first walked through the gate what did you think I thought what have we gotten ourselves into here <laughs> That's what I thought. Because I was away at the time, wasn't I? Yeah, 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 you were. Yeah. And you'd been approached about it and asked mm -hmm. if you'd be interested in having it. Mm -hmm. I think I'd put my name on the list originally. You had. But uh, didn't think anything would come up for years. And I was the one, actually, who was saying to you, why do we need an allotment? Because we had. The allotment that we did have, I don't know if you've seen the videos this far back, but the first allotment was about a third of this size. Only about a third of this size. And we shared it with someone else. And whereas it was so, so, so productive, um, we'd done all we could possibly do. And had we wanted to try anything else, which we have done here, we just didn't have the space to do it, did we? So this afforded us the luxury of space, you know, which, phew, crikey, we haven't looked back. In fact, we still, even though it's bigger than ever, um, we still can't find spaces to put things, can we? You know, we've managed to use it up pretty quickly. But I know when I first walked in, it had it been my first allotment, had I never done an allotment before, I think I would have been put off by the amount of work that clearly needed doing because what had happened to it beforehand? It had been owned by, or sorry, run by a chap who wasn't very well. Yeah, yeah. And so he'd sort of, he'd covered a lot of the, of the allotment with carpet mm -hmm. and he was growing sort of little patches of strawberries and just little bits and pieces, I think. Yeah, yeah. But because he'd, he'd left the plot because of ill health, one of the neighbours had decided to spray the whole thing with yeah. glyphosate. I don't know what it was, but it, it's basically an unruly plot that needed putting back in its place, didn't it? It was you just know, all so dead weeds, wasn't it really? It dead was dead weeds dead. And, and, and actually dead leeks and dead, dead everything. Well, dead soil. Yeah. Really, and that's the one thing I think, um, I and mean, we'll come back onto that later on, but when you look at the video, I, I did mention that we were in the middle of that huge heat wave. I think we were. July last year? It was just before the World Cup started. All ah, right, yeah. okay. But it was, um, I mean, the cracks in the soil were huge. And I think the way it has been, I was gonna say farmed, the way things have been grown up until we took it on, has very much been um, the idea of, if you've got a weed, spray it, put your plants in. If your plants aren't doing very well, spray them. So everything was adding, adding, adding. Spray weeds, spray your plants, you know, don't really worry about the soil. Um, you know, and, and so what we've had to do, I, I think really, I used the word arid before. I think it was arid. It was also, I think, barren. It was a bit of a barren wasteland, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> but we saw potential. We saw potential. And uh, yeah, we're glad we took it on, don't we? Anyway, Mike's not being very talkative now, are you Mike? I'm giving I'm you just, the chance to I'm talk. Just, I'm just going to wait for the gaps and then I will <laughs> I will say my piece. I'm giving, I always get told off not letting Mike talk so I keep looking at him to let him talk and he doesn't. It was arid and I think we needed to have a plan didn't we? We needed a sort of a concrete plan of where we were going to start. And where was that plan? And Jane, it was in Jane's mind because Jane's a very good planner. It was in my head. It was, yeah, I like to plan but I also like to have somebody else <laughs> to do the things for me. I mean, to be honest, it would have been too much as one person. This would have just been far too much. So you've been responsible for, shall we say some of the donkey work, Mike? Some, some of the donkey some work. Of the, some of the structural stuff, I would say. Whereas yeah. the imagination, the creativity. <laughs> All of that comes purely from Jane. <laughs> Side, not doing much. No, that's not true. Actually, that's not true. We've sort of um, we've had our own areas to sort of take care of. But but listen, because this idea, I only thought about this yesterday, so 24 hours ago, and um, I thought, what would be good? There, there have been so many people who've taken on pots this year, and you know, wondering whether they can keep it going and everything. That's why I did the splice in the videos together. But I also thought it would be nice to get some questions from you to see. Um, 
what we think over the last year and what we've learned. And so I know on the Facebook page, quite a few of you, thank you very much, have asked questions. And if all goes well and my battery hasn't run out, they're on here. So just a second. You can sing a song, Michael, or something if you like, when I'm looking at the questions. No, don't I'm sing. not a singer. No, you're not. He's not. <clears throat> uh, right. Oh, how heavens, I've got a risotto recipe. Right, OK. Paul. Paul Savdon. I hope I say your name right, Paul. Savidon. 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 Monsieur Savidon. I can do the Paul. OK. I'm not so sure about the second bit. OK. Paul says... Is there one major thing that you would do differently? And then there's this emoji, this one. Mm. Mm. Is there, Mike? What would, what would you do differently? Um, I think, I think we, I think we got it right, really, in lots of ways. So we we started at the bottom and worked our way up to the top. No, no, you're not allowed to say that. You've got to think of what you want uh, to do differently. I think Something I would have, or I would, nothing. I would have wanted to have employed a Charles Dowding style no dig approach in a big way from day one. Great load of green manure, um, you know, oh, sorry, green, green compost being delivered outside the allotment and then just putting it on top of that dead soil. That would have saved a lot of weeding later on, definitely. Mm. I disagree. I don't think we would have had time to do that um, because of all the structure work that we put in. So I what would you have done, Jane? Well, I don't know. I haven't thought it through much. <laughs> <laughs> I should have thought it through. One major thing I would have done differently. I like it. I think I like it as it is. There'll be lots of little things, but I can't think of any major things. Um, we just got stuck in, didn't we? We did just get stuck in, yeah. The first, the first, that, the very I, first task that we did when we moved in. I just, that was coming on the to very that. first task. Coming on to that. Let's get the coming questions Coming on in to order. that. Let's just, uh, right, Paula might come back to you on that one. But this then leads on to a question from Elizabeth Walter. Nice straightforward name, Elizabeth Walter. I can pronounce that. Elizabeth said, how did you prioritise what to do with the plot since taking it on? Over to you, Mike. Well, when you first walked in through the gate, there was a huge pile of old rubbish. It wasn't really a compost heap. It was just a big old pile of bottles and junk. bits of wood. All the junk. There was some sort of cut grass, things like that. And we decided to try and flatten that out to create a little border, didn't we? Oh. A sort of a floral border, a herbaceous border. Yeah. Mm. And then we decided to build a little a little raised herb bed next to the shed with the materials or some of the materials that had come from that, some of the good materials. So that was like an obvious first step just because it was the first thing you saw when you walked in the door. So the first step re really was clearing out the rubbish. Yes. The amount of um, things we took to the tip and I hate throwing things away. We were looking at things and thinking, can we reuse this? Can we reuse this? We've still got a whole load of stuff, haven't we, yeah. to be taken. But we had to start clearing the area. Um, to be able to take it from scratch but like you say Mike it was it was basically <laughs> being able to open the door yeah because that gate was getting stuck in fact that was going to be our first job to lay a slab on the inside of the gate mm. because that does pull with water doesn't it the slab's still there nowhere near the front of the gate but that's a job that's yeah. obviously not priority but then go on. but also it was really good to just have one little task that was going to take a couple of days yeah. And rather than worry about the whole of the allotment and get overawed by that, just to have one thing to get finished, so when you came in you could look at it and you know you know you'd, you'd made a good start. That was important. Yeah. So you feel like you're getting making some headway. Little steps. And also in my head, <coughs> that central apple tree, the pruned tree. Um, in my head, that was like an automatic demarcation. I felt like we had, in my head, it was already divided. We had between the gate and the greenhouses, which needed clearing. We had these, which on the video, you see you're in the corner, aren't you, Mike? Um, starting the strawberry bed, which I think is off shot here. And the dust coming up when you're just trying to put the spade in. And looking back at that just now, we were saying, good grief, now we know why people thought we were mad, because everything else needed doing, but Mike was concentrated on getting that one bed done to put the strawberry beds, the strawberries in. And we carried on with that. Yeah, so there was gate to greenhouse. Then there was, we managed to see there was like, like four old raised bits, weren't we? Yeah. Which is what we used to outline the um, edged beds. And then we wanted to do the full rotational beds. And then um, the big apple tree at the top there, we still haven't managed to 
get hold of what's on the other side of that yet, have yeah, we? That's that our is, last project, really. Yeah, with time and family and other commitments this year, we just haven't been able to get into, uh, on top of that. But it's good because it means we've still got something to do, still a project. But yeah, so it's actually seeing it in your head, little chunks. And as Sean James Cameron always says, do a little, do it often. It works, it really, really works. Otherwise, <clears> you'd just be completely overawed by it, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> I've already said that. Okay. But I like to say it ten times more yeah, words. Yeah, I've said it once. <laughs> Nick! Hello, Nick! Nick from Allotment Diary with his lovely sunflowers. Oh, it's got, it's got squashed in the air. Uh, oh! Nick says... Oh, I think that... Oh, uh, uh. Right, okay. What is the favourite thing that you've grown this year? Can I answer that one first, please? Garlic. The elephant garlic. We haven't got any here to show you, but oh my goodness, it's the first time. <laughs> it's, the, it's the first time. It's not there, I'll take no. it home. It's the first time our elephant garlic's ever worked. And um, yeah, tennis ball size. We're so thrilled Massive. With that. The thing is, though, I want to keep about four of them to have clothes for next year. So I think we've got 12. I've given one away. Yeah, it's going to be like a two monthly treat is our elephant garlic, but oh, if you haven't grown it, if you've got space for it, it just looks after itself. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. But Mike's got something here. Well, staying <laughs> with the Allium family, yes. um, it's a bit boring really, but I picked I picked the, old, the humble onion because I've, I found these hard to grow in the past. And you put that in front of the camera, in front of your head, it looks even bigger. Look, yeah, yeah, that's good. So this is an Unwin's giant exhibition onion. It's not as big as these things get, but I think again, for a first year in, in unknown soil, we're really pleased with these growing from seed. And we've got a fair old number of these things. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Have. And as the neighbours pointed out, they don't taste as good as, as the smaller onions, yeah. but they look a lot better. And you can say to your allotment neighbours, how are you getting on with your onions? We've, we've just started with these things. Take a look at my onions. Bit of onion one-upmanship. <laughs> Absolutely. It does look nice in a trug. How do you like these onions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we should have that there, look. Nah, it's not going to work. OK, yeah, so alliums. I mean, we've still got a lot of stuff to come in. I keep saying that. We've... Nah, I think that, yeah, that's another question. Most right. things have worked, haven't they? Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Um, what's Helen, hello Helen, Helen Simmons says, what's been your biggest challenge besides the weather? And I think we both agree on this. Soil. 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 <laughs> this soil, yeah. It's a sort of a silty, slightly clayish soil. Mm. And if just left to its own devices, it bakes rock hard, so hard, that you can stand on top of a fork and it won't go into the soil hard. Yeah, yeah. The water just seems to pool on top. It's crazy hard soil. Which is why um, we're so much into the, going into the no dig method. Yeah. Because the edged beds that we've got at the front here with um, the fruit in, we managed to top them up with probably about six inches yeah. of different compost. Manure hops, and compost, yeah. Manure. Um, and so things have grown in there so much better than they have in the rotational beds. We've lost quite a lot in the rotational beds, I think. The beans have been so poor, courgettes. The broad beans? Just... What about the broad beans? Oh, the broad beans are Broad beans have been great. They've been good, yeah. But this, that soil has had the goodness leached out of it yeah. over so many years. But, but even with the addition of a little bit of green waste compost, mm. Mm. We managed to get really good early and main crop potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Kohlrabi was really good. Yeah, the kohlrabi was good. We haven't oh, had our main crop potatoes Runner yet. beans. Sorry, not runner beans. Broad beans. Broad beans. Onions, shallots. They've all been great. Yeah. But the soil, I think as well, we were spoiled at the old plot because the soil there was beautiful. It was like Gardener's World soil, wasn't it? It was like Monty Don soil. It was like you transported Monty Don's soil and put it on oh shut up now. yeah <laughs> really nice so it's getting to grips with the soil and even though we're only what a mile along the road you sort of think all the soil in a certain area is going to be the same type um yeah it's something we've never had to consider before so certainly now we're going to go for the building the soil up build up the natural soil structure yeah. the natural organisms within it and everything minimal dig yeah yeah and you know you look after your soil your soil looks after you well said. <laughs> it's 
sure someone said that it's moving on moving on every time you see my screen keeps going oh here we go yes sean sean james cameron he of do it little do it often three questions in one okay i'm gonna break it up into three are you pleased you made the move yes 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 sean for all the reasons that we've said yeah three times as big far more interesting far better plot lovely neighbors Re really private it's lovely just yeah. absolutely idyllic yeah. i mean yeah. apart from the wind noise which you're probably well i hope you're not getting too much well, on this thing because we are just i'm looking around here we're this on top of the hill here, really, surrounded aren't we? by trees we're, oh, just, we're just we're just off the brow of a hill aren't we yeah 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 so it's quite sheltered in a way isn't it but yeah. um yeah it's, uh, i was the one as I say, who was resistant in the first place, I didn't see the point of getting a new plot because we had the old one and it was working really well, but yeah, long term it's worked well, hasn't it? Great. Do you still miss the old plot? I miss the soil. That's it again, I miss the soil. I don't miss um, going down and even though we had lovely neighbours, almost like you couldn't switch off in your own space if the neighbours were there as well it was lovely you'd have a chat but you couldn't just switch off or just sit or just appreciate it if someone else is around um nobody passes us by on this plot <laughs> there ridiculous. are no bypasses to come and We've say neighbours there's no one to come and say you want to get rid of those weeds oh, they'll yeah. overrun the whole place yeah because yeah. we're at the end of the line yeah i know that is lovely as well yeah and that lane if you see on them some of the previous videos the lane that we walk along is just as you walk along you feel like you're going back in time almost or i do um it's just beautiful so yeah don't miss it did to begin with quite a lot um i'm worried about making the wrong decision but that's why we kept it on for a couple of months didn't we yeah um after we took this place on because we were going to continue using that just for fruit but by the time it came to renew that lease, we renewed yeah. the contract, we decided not I miss that. my oh. I miss my shed because I made a shed there from scratch. You loved that shed, didn't I you? I loved that shed. But, <laughs> but you know what? Having left that shed to the new incumbents of our old allotment, we've got an even better shed here. Yeah. And yeah. We've, we've, we've tripled our greenhouse space. Yeah. So it's good. What are your plans for the future? Finish that top bit, I think. Get that top. I think now we've got this structure in place, the beds are in place that that's a plan for the future yeah getting the no dig sorted out on the rotational beds and that top quarter beyond the apple tree um is going to be mainly wildlife area hammock area still haven't got the hammock out this year um there's still some junk to be cleared from that oh, area there's quite a lot of junk to be cleared but we have moved a heck of a lot yeah, and the shed at the top is either going to be renewed or revamped because that you know again you're thinking retirement here that's going to be your studio Get your paints out again. Yeah. Get your drawings done again. Do a series know. of portraits of allotment regulars. <laughs> Tiddles. There's some good characters on here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But yeah, so yeah, so I think really the plans for the future are getting that top end done. But I think we're here for the long term, really, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Okay. Mandy Baldwin, what would you like on the plot that you haven't got yet? Mandy, I still want my pond. I've been saying it for a year now. Um, Mike's worried about mosquitoes because he does get bitten quite a lot. Terribly. But um, he doesn't have to go near the pond. <laughs> I can keep away from the top end. Oh, we can have we can have Which a water we're feature. Put, yeah. We're gonna have a, a little, little solar water feature to move that water around oh, and yes. discourage the mozzie. Yeah. Even though where I'm going to put the pond is right outside where Mike's studio is going to be. Yes. So it'll attract them all <laughs> in through the door. But yeah, that's what we do. That's what we're missing. I feel as far as getting if we're going down the full organic no dig, all that sort of stuff, we need to be encouraging more wildlife encouraging nature encouraging the mosquitoes mm. because they're food for other things that needs encouraging more mm. pond mandy what about you mike i think i'm looking forward to revamping the shed and having, having a, a nice space a, a proper big old man shed for well yeah for painting drawing tootling about a space to escape from jane a quiet space good. a lovely quiet space <laughs> will you have the only key I might do I might do my own YouTube channel called Mike's Quiet Space. <laughs> yeah, good. Good. Go for it. No okay. talking. There'll be no, no talking. No. No. Minimal. Mike talks too much for my liking. Um Brian, hello Brian, and hello Brian's mum, because this question's for you. 
says, Brian says, is it far from home? Can you walk there? Because his mum's curious to know. Well, yeah, we can. It's a mile away. It's over something called the Common Plot, which is a lovely little area of public land, isn't it? In, yeah. in stone, where there it's are big. cows and things. Conquer trees. But the truth chestnuts. is, the truth is that we often don't. <laughs> No, we drive up here. Very often we drive up in the car, but if we've got the dog with us, one of us will walk back over the fields. Um, but I think partly that's to do, we're usually carrying stuff, you know, so if, if not this time of year, I'm going back with my truck. One, one of us will often walk the dog back that way. That's what I just said. Yes. But we've got such a big old um, trek, haven't we, from the, from the road along there down to the allotment that you don't feel too guilty because it's no 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 it's lovely it takes about from our allotment gate to our back gate 20 minutes yeah it's a 20 minute walk and it's over fields um there's one minor road it's about that wide so it is quite beautiful and it brings you back down on the canal and back to our back gate so yeah it's so it's not far brian's mum it's lovely um Jackie, last question, and I like this one. I think this is a good one to end on. We're going to end very soon. It's Mike keeps talking. Um, Jackie Bridgen says, if you could consign one weed to the outer circles of hell, never to be seen again, which one would you choose? Mare's tail. But we haven't got mare's tail. No, but that's not the question. The question is, which oh. weed would you consign? And so, you know, We've had it before. We had a, we had a, we an allotment. It. Our first allotment was infested with mare's tail. Yeah. And it's just so frustrating. You can't get rid of the stuff. I know. Well, you can, but you've got to dig it out about two feet down. We've got people watching who've probably got mare's tail who are probably weeping. <laughs> if you've got mare's tail, <laughs> I would say. My thoughts are with you. I actually, I would say, if you've got mare's tail, go for no dig. Get it yeah, covered up. Yeah, that's a good idea. And mm -hmm. um, you know, just keep layering on top. To you, just weakening it as much as you possibly that's true. can. That's true. That's true. Um, we're very, very lucky on this plot. The weeds we've got, and probably because of years and years of being sprayed with weed killer, we're probably encouraging all the weeds now. They're mainly annual weeds, aren't they? We haven't got any horrendous, you know, horrendous weeds at all. We've got a couple of prickly ones, but everything sort of comes up as soon as you pull it. Even, even we've got quite a bit of grass because of the topped area, I think, where we've got the rotational plots. One of those, I think, was just grass, wasn't it? Yeah. But that just tends to come up, considering we've said the soil's so bad. Um, we haven't yeah. we haven't really got any terrible problems with bindweed or no. I've got that in the garden grass. at home. Oh, that's a pain in the garden at home because it's going up the wisteria. Mm. So you, you pull it from the bottom, which is what I always do, and half your wisteria comes off the house. But uh, it's not not to be not to be advised. Mare's tail. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd agree with the mare's tail. No, couch grass plagues a lot of people, but yeah. So far, on Touchwood, we've been very very lucky. Anyway, Michael, I think we're probably done. I called you Michael, being official now. What do you think? What are your What are your final thoughts on this last twelve months? Highs and lows. I've thrown you with that one, has I? You have a little bit. Uh, the highs are well. The highs are when you harvest something, aren't they? When you see your work come to some fruition. So that's a, that's a massive high. So growing something like kohlrabi, never grown it before, mm. grew it really, really well. The old onion here, I mean, for me, this, this kind of thing is really exciting. Um, and really, stuff. that's it. There's no other highs. Yeah, I think you've just swallowed the uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, your onion. That onion is the high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, um, as far as I'm concerned, are the lows, yeah, when things go wrong, and again, as, as I started off at the very beginning of the video, I said, you know, you take on an, it's an unknown, I was going to say quantity, it's an unknown entity, isn't it? You don't know the soil. But, you think everything's going to work as it's done before, excuse me. But sometimes, that, but, but sometimes the lows actually aren't that, they're, they're not lows really. I know. And that's one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do the splicing, <laughs> to show the before and after, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, at the moment, the apples have got scab. Yeah. Half the raspberries have died and the ones that are growing taste soapy. Why do our raspberries taste soapy? Is it the soil? We're not spraying Can them with anything. We're not spraying them with but anything, the, But no. the grapes, which Jane was catastrophizing mm -hmm. about just a few weeks back because there were one, well, a number of them had sort of gone a little bit brown. And oh, Jane no. was saying, that's it, that's it now. We might as well just cut them all back. We've lost them for this year. People have been telling me that we've got grape blight or whatever it was. Black rot. They're absolutely fine. Mm, I'm still not convinced. Actually, they have come back, haven't they? They're better yeah. than ever. They're so better than last year. So you do start to think, I think because if you didn't love it, you wouldn't do it. You know, 
you've got to really want to do it and we're both lucky that we both enjoy doing it don't you mike <laughs> jane possibly i will say jane more than me but i do enjoy it it's great yeah, it's like know, an outdoor I, I, it, it's an outdoor gym isn't it it's it great is, it is but for the mind as well it's great and i think um i don't know what i think now i've taught myself around a corner i don't know what what was i saying was i saying something interesting no <laughs> Uh, you can edit this yeah. though, can't you? Oh, you can yeah, edit yeah, this. Yeah. Yes. You do put such a lot of time and effort and thought into it. For really, if what we're looking at harvest wise, you know, we could probably get for 50 quid at the shops. And you think, well, actually. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not a fine specimen you, like that. You don't do it, or we certainly don't do it. I know a lot of people, I know like Vivi does it to sort of feed herself over the year. Um, and we don't do it to that extent yet, but you never know with Brexit, Mike. We're going to have zombies the the trailing going. through the hedges, getting our carrots. But yeah, yeah, we're getting to grips with it this year. And then this following year, it's going to be onwards and upwards, hopefully. Yeah, we know what we're dealing with now, don't we? And we've got a really good structure to start from. Yeah. yeah. Shall we stop now? Yeah, well done, Jane. Well done, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I hope you've enjoyed it. Any other questions, just, um, just put in the comments below. And if you know how to store cucumbers, let me know and why are our raspberries soapy. Come along to the Facebook page, um, have a little look at Instagram. I'll put it all down there for you. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Done. Okay, okay. You always do that. Done.